yeah, brother. You're on the Please Me Fall on YouTube channel. All right, guys, welcome back. Today is an exciting day. We have to start on Leroy and get his new engine swapped into him. James lives over by Profab, so he just picked up Leroy this morning. I haven't even seen him with his new cage work, but I hear it's pretty crazy. It's a, it's a pro mod now. <laughs> I guess it looks just like a pro mod now. Like it's, oh my gosh, dude, what? Holy crap. You have like a hood over you now. Dude, that is serious as hell. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. Dude, they crushed it. Dude, yes. Profab is so it. good. Oh my god, dude, the parachute is insane. Yeah. What? Watch the parachute bag and, and listen. Oh, so they added a brace here. Yeah, this is new. Okay, so guys, I said in our videos that we were gonna have a new parachute set up. This is actually a CO2 powered parachute launcher. So we have our CO2 over there. Watch this when James hits the switch. Oh yeah, there's some pressure behind that. No way, man. <laughs> nuts holy crap so basically what happens is before i make a pass james or someone will arm my parachute and then when i pull it like normal this co2 actuator will fire the parachute off of the back of the car allowing it to deploy properly hopefully all right let's get this thing in the sun dude i gotta see this stuff out there damn that is some serious cage work damn Oh, they got two days? Yeah. <laughs> All the welds look magnificent. This, this is nuts, guys. Here we go. Oh. All right, here we are. Dude, that is so nuts. That is so crazy looking. Oh my God, dude. This is insane. Look at how they wrap the bars around the back. Holy hell, dude. <laughs> well, the use of like the pin bars and the thick. Like, wow, uh, yeah. The cool thing is too, we had to lower my seat so that we made sure to have a proper amount of clearance for my head. Wow, and the, does the window net still work? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. We just stepped up our safety game big time. This is nuts. So is this removable? He made this all removable, huh? Yeah, this, you take this out, this out, this whole piece comes away. This is the <laughs> same quick disconnect style fitting like all oh, the okay. ones are now, yeah. Wow. God, they crushed it, man. Profab just killing it every time. All right, well, let's get this thing inside and on the lift. We have a ton of work to do today. We gotta get these engines swapped. So much to do. All right, folks, we are about to open Leroy's special box. I have now been informed of what is inside, but I have not seen it yet. This is a big moment because this is a, a real racing engine. We're gonna be able to do everything we've always done with Leroy, but this is a 1500 plus horsepower engine like it's nothing. So we're about to open it up. See what we got. See what it is, a 5.0 liter. No, no, there ain't no five liter. All right, I'm getting there. I know, dude. I'm so excited. All right. Ooh, baby. All right, so everyone take note. That is an orange block. That means this is an LSX iron block. So you guys know on Leroy's old engine, it was an aluminum block. It was a four bolt head setup. This is an iron block with a six bolt head setup. So we're not gonna have to worry about head gaskets anymore. Oh yeah. Don't get anything down in the valley there. I might want to tape those Ooh, off. baby. Oh, look at that. Hashtag team no coolant. <laughs> it says add coolant. So this is Leroy 2.0, built for hashtag full sends. All right, so the details on this bad girl. This is a 427, just like what Leroy had. This is just a motor that's built a little bit better for Leroy's power level. So these are 271 Texas Speed heads. They've got Texas Speed's new roller rockers on them. This thing has Johnson short travel lifters in it. In our old setup, we just had stock lifters. We had stock rockers. It was just kind of thrown together and it made a lot of power, but this motor is built to make some serious power. So yeah, 427, just like Leroy's old setup. It does have six bolt heads, which is really gonna help us hold these down and keep a head gasket in because we do not want water under our tires at one 
70. So because it's an iron block, it's a lot stronger in general. Uh, an aluminum block, although ours was sleeve, they still distort quite a bit. This baby is solid. Now it is gonna add some weight, about 80 pounds to our setup, and that's gonna be hanging on the nose of Leroy. So something we'll have to work out at the track for sure. The car is gonna leave a little bit different with that extra weight. Plus we have extra weight from the cage. But the best thing about all this is when we get to the track, we don't have to worry about putting it on 30 pounds of boost because this engine can handle it. The pistons are CP pistons. They're the same size as the old setup. It's got the uh, Carrillo bullet rods in it. And then it does have a Texas Speed billet crank in it. So this thing is top notch, guys. This is no joke. We're gonna be able to put this thing in Leroy and I think it's time to set a quest for 200 miles an hour. 200. 200. Or bust. Got it in her. That's what we're thinking, guys. 200 miles an hour or bust. Can we do it? I think so. It's definitely going to take some time to get there, but with this engine and those precision turbos, we're going to be turning things up and hopefully Texas Speed can carry us to our goal once again. 200 miles an hour. That's 24 miles an hour faster than what it took to do that 7 8. 24 miles an hour. That's a lot of room, guys. So. Especially with our bad aerodynamics, we might have to make some changes. We're not gonna make any now to our aero, but as we get closer to our goal, I think some changes in the aero might be required. <laughs> our drag coefficient is so bad, so we'll work on it. There's much more information to come about this engine. This is just what I'm getting off the top of my head right now. We're gonna pull this thing out, get Leroy pulled in the shop, and it'll be go time. We got a lot of work to do to swap this baby in. Ready to rip this thing apart. And We've been running in three days. Get after it, yeah. Hopefully sooner. We have less than a week until we leave for LS Fest, so it is crunch time. Hopefully we don't run into any big roadblocks, but like with any project, we will. We just got to get after it and get this amazing new engine out. Six days and no running vehicles. Yeah, I know. Six <laughs> days and no running vehicles. There you go. All righty, folks. The Bonafide Bald Eagle has landed in the shop it is go time we were talking we think the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna take the manifolds off for the turbos and everything set them aside and then we're gonna drop the entire front cradle so what we'll do is we'll go down put the cradle on jack stands and then we'll raise leroy off of the entire powertrain that way while we have everything down it's gonna be a lot easier to swap parts over to the new engine and doing things like the clutch and all that we can just get done put everything back together, bell housing, torque tube, and put it all back in in one big piece. Should make things a lot more simple, but we won't really know until we get there. Once the car is on the lift, we're gonna get started, pull the manifolds off and go from there. Hey James, make sure uh, we drain the coolant. I don't think there is any. <laughs> There's already no coolant. Hell yeah, we're off to a good start. One step done already. One step done. So we gotta drain the oil, but we're gonna pull a couple things off up here before we raise it up and get to work down there. All right guys, so our big old Frankenstein intake is off. We didn't scratch it. See there's some oil here in the valley cover. A lot of live action going on in here in Leroy 1.0's engine. It's oil all around the seals for the intake too because the catch can was blowing oil. But we're getting there. We just gotta pull these manifolds off now and keep on chugging along. I got the oil filled side. I got the water side. Guys, look at this thing that James is using. It's a creeper with built-in flashlights and actual tires so that you don't run stuff over in your shop and get stopped. It says all terrain. All terrain tires. Dang. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. He's ripping. It's called a Fast Bag Pro by Creepex. They sent them in and we've been using them. We love them. So the water pump came off, no problem. James got the power steering pump off. Once that manifold's off, I think we just pulled the engine at that point. Everything comes apart so easily, guys. But trust me, putting it all back together takes 
five times as long and then the last 10% of this project takes 90% of the time because you gotta plug everything in, make sure everything is plumbed correctly, just so many little things and they take forever. Alright, so now that we have Leroy in the air, we have to do something that I have been wanting to do for a long time. As you guys know, we have all of our records on the bottom of the car. We have our first 998. Over here, we have our first eight second pass right there on October 28th. It went 890 at 159. Then we have when we beat the world record, went 848 at 163. And then we have world record number two when we went 810 and got the record back. But now, it is time for the blank spot to finally get some handwriting on it. We are putting down the seven second pass. That would be 782 at 176 mile per hour. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, brother. Dang, dude, it's been such a long time coming. All right, boys, get on there. James, get in there, put it down. Cooper, get in there. I was trying to get the date real quick. Let it rip, Coop. Damn, there's a lot of people who need to sign this. A lot of people who had their hands in this project and finally came together. And we'll be back for the 200 mile per hour mark. So everything down under the car does look pretty good. You can see there's oil on pretty much everything, but we're about set. We have pretty much everything unhooked, all of our grounds off, minus maybe a couple things that we'll find on the way down. But we're about to lower Leroy down, get some jack stands under the cradle, and then raise the rest of the car up off of him. It's gonna be a little bit of a process, but we're ready. We're right there. All right, jack stands are in place. Time to lift this sucker up. Oh, LS Fest is in a week. Might as well take your entire car apart. Entire powertrain and drivetrain. Yeah, might as well. No, why not? What better time to do this than... A week out from a race? Right now, yeah. Damn. Oh, this is crazy. You know, guys, what's nuts is this car hasn't been apart in so long. It's been well over a year. I mean, right when we got it is when we swapped the engine. So think of how long this very engine has been in this car so long so many passes i mean 300 plus passes some of the biggest burnouts ever probably 50 to 100 dyno pulls the list goes on pretty insane an engine that we have had so much fun with i mean we've done it all with this thing oh yeah think of how much this thing has taught us heavily used heavily used i don't think texas speed knew what it was going to go through when they gave it to us but Hell, we had a damn good time and it's time for this thing to go back to Texas Speed. They are gonna bring it with them to LS Fest. We're actually going to do a live teardown to see the damage on this thing. I really don't think it's in that bad of shape. I know both head gaskets are bad, but shoot, I think the rest of the engine is fine. Look at this clutch. It is not in bad shape by any means. I mean, that is absolutely impressive. Monster Clutch is, is killing it. I mean, this LT1 RR Triple has been in the car all year. Not a single problem. We're getting it refreshed now because we have the opportunity, but wow, I mean, all the discs look great. No major chunks missing, anything like that. What a clutch. There's a reason why everyone else who's chasing our record just went and ordered one of these two. Damn, dude. It's so really sick. Monster clutch is for the win, people. So now that Old Faithful is chilling here, got the clutch off, pretty much everything we need right now. 
We're gonna pick it up. We gotta get the oil pan off of it and then we're gonna put the legs that the new motor was shipped here on, on there so we can just set it down and get it ready to come to LS Fest. You can see our head gasket was trying to make the great escape. <laughs> it's, it's completely split up here and pushed a little bit off of where it should be. See the discoloration? Yeah. It's actually blowing stuff out of it. That's weird. Yeah. How'd that happen? Let me see the other side. The other side doesn't look nearly as bad, but if you guys remember, the first head gasket that went was right here, so more than likely the block is a little bit warped and that's why we keep seeing it in that same spot. But you know, full send, what can you do? So James drained the oil on Little Ripper and you said it was clean. It was clean. But we'll see, there might be some, some stuff in the pan, but we're about to pull it off and we'll find out if there's really anything crazy in it. Gosh, this here is what you call some uh, bearing material. Guys, it is littered. It is. No way. Oh, look all back here. Wow. That is what happens when you run out of oil pressure like we did on our last pass. When we ran, the oil was so hot from not having coolant in the engine, we only made 11 pounds of oil pressure when we were in fourth gear. The oil was so thin and just so wrecked from being so hot, we didn't have enough oil pressure and it literally ate our bearings. You can see those rods look normal, all shiny and silver. And then these ones look all discolored, a little bit burnt. So that rod bearing is actually the one that we think went out. Pretty amazing, it held that much abuse for so long. We finally cooked it, like right at the end. Still drove in the trailer on the last drive. Well, you know what they say. They always run their best before they come apart. Yeah. <laughs> well, Little Ripper was running pretty good that day. Amazing. It's just so cool to see this stuff and how hard we pushed this thing is incredible. And it's made it so far. And it's, it's really not a big deal. I mean, you throw a bearing in there, good to go, ready to rip again. Well, guys, we are going to call it a day. It's been a long one. We've had a blast working on Leroy, tearing him down. I mean, look at him. He has completely been torn apart today but we got to do what we got to do we have less than a week to be ready for ls fest i think like six days now well five working days left so we're tired but we're ready to keep on chugging along here getting this thing done gotta finish up the dale truck we'll have some parts for that tomorrow the intake and the clutch Woo we are busy but we're doing it for Dale. We're going to get this done. So for now, guys, thanks for watching. Do it for Dale. We will freaking see you later.